What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title called Fates of Ort. We had a chance to check this game out about two years ago when it first came out in early access. I think the game has actually passed its 1.0 at this point. However, I haven't checked in on it in a really, really long time. And so I figured we'd, since we've changed formats since back then and a lot of things have moved around with regards to how the Nerd Castle functions, I figured we'd dive on in and play around with it for a minute. If you haven't seen Fates of Ort before, it's an action RPG that's set in an open world where you are just a guy. That's pretty much it. You were just a guy that happened to be there while crazy stuff was happening and now everybody's using you as their gopher. I've gotten us past the tutorial phase of the game so that we don't have to play through that entire sequence. We are right now on the steps of where that ended. So anyways, the storyline recap so that you vaguely understand what's going on. We were visiting our sister at an Academy for Heroes. In true predictable form, the Academy of Heroes was attacked by a big bad guy. We were killed. Our sister was killed. Everybody was killed. They killing everybody in here. But we survived because when we went to the afterlife, we bonded with a goddess. And we got to pick which goddess we wanted to support our adventures in stopping the great evil that's consuming the world. I went with the goddess of death because like all I have is like a little stabby sword right there. You can see me doing like a little stabby sword thing. I figured being on good terms with the goddess of death would be a really good idea since I am after all a warrior. However, there were other goddesses there. It's just that like one of them was a goddess of life and she was way too talkative and like way too friendly towards human beings. And like she wanted to make new friends and stuff and I was like, yeah, that's going to get tiresome after about five minutes. So I went with the goddess of death because, you know, it just seemed like it was applicable to my skill sets. As of right now, this thing is blinking. Oh, I can break it and there's stuff inside of it. We got coins and things down here. Okay, so there's green coins, red coins, purple coins. Gotcha. So we're going to dive on into Fates of Ort. I'm going to give you some belated first impressions. We can talk about the game as we go. On top of that, you'll be able to find a link down below in the description if you wanted to get it for yourself. And then on top of that, I'll have a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. Are these guys friendly? I bet these guys are probably not friendly. Uh, so the way the combat system works in this game is it's kind of like a modified Diablo combat, combat system. Uh, things only move when you move, basically. Ow, I'm getting whomped right now, dude. That guy's dead, though, so that's good. I don't know if I can, like, use my time to dodge. Apparently, I dropped both of them right there. Unfortunately, my HP is not looking so great. However, getting some XP would probably be a good idea because I am curious to see how the entire game funk. Can I break their tent? Nyaaah! Committing crimes against camping! Okay, I can't break your tent. Never mind. It's all I wanted to do was break your tent. Oh, there's a little wormy boy over here and some kind of pustule thing going on. All right, let's smack that dude up, and then we'll try to dodge whatever projectiles this thing's putting out. And there we go. We've killed it off, and actually, we got, like, a sizable chunk of XP. I actually, like, I'm of two minds about the UI in this game. Like, some of it I really, really like. Some of it I really, really do not like. Like, this letterboxing thing that they've got going on, I don't think that it's, like, necessary. In fact, I'd like to see them come up with a minimalist uh, UI that does not do this. I'm kind of a big fan of having, like, a clean area of play when I play games and having everything kind of letterboxed into this thin sort of column that I've got to play inside is definitely kind of an old school reference. It goes back to games like Ultima 6 and whatnot, but I don't prefer it. However, I do like the meters that fill up with fluid down here. Like, I just, I don't see why this background is not, like, to, to my eye, you could get rid of this entire background right here and get rid of this entire background right here. And then you could just have the meters at the top of the screen and then you could have the coins like over in this corner and then you could have all of these little supplementary utilities like our sword or like our elements that we've collected you could just have them like lined up at the bottom and then you would have like an unimpeded view uh, you feel overwhelmed Valka is dead that's our sister Arg is on the brink of corruption that's our friend Master Slovo has been hauled off to stand trial for the crimes he did not commit that was the guy that was training our sister to be a hero the world is crumbling and it's up to you to save it with no help or guidance where do you even begin if you feel stuck or don't know what to do the answer is always explore more. Your actions will open up paths for quests and block off others. Keep exploring and getting experience. When you're ready to face the end, go to Dormant Court and take on the consumption magic of Scorned and Duke Camersalt. Okay, sounds like a plan. I'm going to continue exploring because I feel like we're going to need much more treasure and much more equipment and whatnot before this gets any easier. What does this sign say down here? All right, so we've got Dormancourt Court to the southeast, so that's that way, and to the northwest we have the Chroniclary. Okay, the Chroniclary is where we need to go for one of our quests. Are you guys good guys or are you guys bad guys? 
Oh no, I was too far away. Okay, we'll get around him. There we go. Perfect. We've slain another one. That thing was actually like a really, really good source of XP the last time we killed one. So I'm going to try to get those wherever I can see them. We'll walk over this way. And who are you guys? The two men stand appraising you with skeptical expressions. What's this? The taller one says. You think you're a hero? Ha! <laughs> the shorter one adds. You're still fighting maggots. The taller one scoffs. Maggots. The short one echoes. Who are you? They puff up with pride. We are the heroes of Ort. The tall one begins. We're heading to Dormant Court to defeat Duke Camersalt in the consumption. You'll see. You'll see, the smaller one says. Best you turn back. It's too dangerous for the likes of you. Leave it to us real heroes. I'm totally fine with that. I didn't even want to be a hero in the first place. I was like delivering lunch to my sister at school. And now I'm, I'm murdering giant turd snakes with a sword, dude. Like, I don't even have cleaving. All right, a little bit of health right there. Let's see if we can wipe these guys out. I honestly don't know how to heal or anything yet either. Oh my god, I almost got poisoned. Am I level 2 yet? I want to be level 2 so I can see what progression looks like. Doesn't look like there's anything back here in this little corner. I do very much like the graphical stylings of the game, though. It reminds me of, like, the old Ultima games, which, frankly, have been consumed by the fires of EA. And so I'm pretty sure we're, like, never going to see an Ultima game again, and they're just going to lock it up in their vault, which is kind of a shame because I wish I knew what the Avatar was up to lately. We'll go into this house right here and see if it's got anything cool for us. The lady that lived inside here turned into a monster, so... The man looks at you anxiously as you enter the house. You're not one of them, are you? What do you mean? Ever since the royal visit, people have been acting odd. I hid when they knocked on the door and had a bad feeling about it all. His voice trembles and he starts fighting tears. My brother turned into some kind of monster. A plant that was farting green spores. My wife is acting weird too. They both spoke to that evil looking man. Duke Camersalt. Yeah, that's his name. We gotta get out of here. I heard Dormant Court is in ruins, but Trawad is nearby. It might still be safe. Take me with you. He's interrupted by a violent rupture in the ground and is swallowed by a chasm that appears in the floor before he can scream. Yikes. Rough way to go out. He wasn't kidding. It looks like there is a whole lot of corruption and stuff happening. Can I break all these crates and stuff? Oh, nice. I can, dude. All right, let's break up some of these crates and see what kind of goodies we can get out of them. Can I break their firewood? No. Okay, well, it was just an attempt. It looks like I can't nap inside of the beds or anything in order to get my HP back. So as of right now, I personally am not super sure how I heal myself. I assume... Oh, my God. Okay, this is not what was outside the house. Ah, there you are. It took you long enough. I set up this area for you. I gathered the spells I could find from days long gone. A lot of them are missing, but this should be enough. Simply go up to a spell and select it to learn it. Once you're experienced enough to learn another, I will draw you back here. The barriers will disappear as you learn more. We need to protect your fledgling mind from more powerful spells. Okay, cool, man. Sounds good. Uh, that's the mother of the goddesses. That, like, one of them is now my friend. So I guess this is what happens when you level up. Uh, what is this spell right here? Bolts of Arcane Magical Power are a combat staple of the competent magician's arsenal. These deadly projectiles explode on impact and deal damage to every creature close enough. That sounds rad. I like the idea of what that sounds like. Oh, can I not get through there right now? Okay, so at each level, level one, we only get Magic Missile. But that's fine, because I like Magic Missile. I personally have never had any sort of prevailing issue with Magic Missile. Okay, so there goes my little magic missile right there. Oh, but it hurts me when I cast. Okay, so I get drain. Well, if we go to the northwest, they said that the chronicler over here would teach me some stuff. And so, like, let's go to the northwest and we'll see if we can find the chronicler. I have no doubt that he's probably under attack or something. That's usually, like, bad guy's first attempt is usually to get rid of anybody that's, like, educated. Who are you? The little creature jumps as you approach. Why there! Stand back! I have an entropic transducer and I'm not afraid to use it. I'm a friend. He relaxes. Oh, thank goodness. I was beginning to think this place was populated by nothing but mean, dim-witted ooze pukes. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Brax, first-class navigator of the Exalted Gyronauts, second cog division. The creature puffs his chest up, clearly proud over his rank. Okay, so why are you here? Well, our seismic monitoring units detected some extraordinary subsurface tremors emanating from this very region. I've been on a handful of expeditions before, so I was sent to investigate. Didn't get very far, though. Not at all. Shot down in a manner most inconsiderate. I was approaching from the north, bearing towards the origin of the tremor. A little bit to the south of here, I was cruising at low altitude when I went past a giant black tower. Curiosity got the better of me, and I got too close, and bam, white lightning from the top of the tower hit my ship. 
knocked out my prismatic aether coil and my navigator to boot. I managed to crash land over here. Is there any way I can help you? That would be splendid. Take this prismatic aether coil and get it repaired for me, please. It's not damaged like badly. Any blacksmith here with the right tools ought to be able to straighten it out. Well, at least I pray so. In return, I'll ferry you to the same locations that are not easily accessible by foot. From a bird's eye view, I can assure you that they would be very interesting to explore for an adventure of your stature. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so I guess I've got a broken prismatic aether coil. Sounds good. And if I want to go back to my sword, I just use the scroll bar in the middle of my mouse. Uh, don't mind me, I'm just breaking up your pottery. Like, I don't actually want the smoke, I don't actually want any drama. I just have, like, a real huge addiction to breaking things that have loot inside them. It's just been programmed into me from a young age from playing Zelda. I gotta get them rupees, man, they're shiny, and honestly, if I'm being, if I'm being totally honest here, if I looted some rupees from Zelda, I'd probably put them in my mouth, because they also look delicious, and as a kid, my favorite snack was Gushers, and they kinda look like Gushers, like a little bit. Alright, so to the west is where they laid our sister to rest in the mausoleum. One of our side quests is that we want to try to resurrect our sister because the goddess has resurrected us. And so it may be worth investigating that. Unfortunately, there's no mention of the Chronicler right here. Whereas in the last zone, it said the Chronicler was to the northwest. So it's possible that this building right here might be the Chronicler. Let's go ahead and look real fast and we'll see what's inside. Maybe this is our guy. Hello? What is this place? A stern-looking woman stands near the entrance of the library. Her clear eyes... Ah, welcome to the Chronoclary. Can I look around? Feel free to visit the Chronoclary at any time, read the books, but be careful. Some of them are ancient and fragile. Okay. And do not think for one instance of taking the books away without permission. I am the warden of the books. I may not have any armies at my disposal, but... Mere Acuria mark my words, I will hunt you down and end you. Okay, is there anything I can do to help you? You look like an adventurer, perhaps even a student enough to appreciate the value of the written word. If you find books in your travel, bring them back here. Okay, is there any reward? Not much I can offer. I found a repository of old documents, maps, sea charts, musical notes, strange old scrolls. I'll trade those in exchange for any books you may find. Here, why don't you take this? It's a map of the open world. Supposedly it's magical. How does it work? A thirst for knowledge is admirable. You see those faded pins on the map? She pauses for a moment and a look of confusion spreads across her face. That's odd. The pin next to the academy isn't faded anymore. But, uh, you're supposed to need to have magic in order to use the map. I do have magic. Oh. Well then, the notes accompanying the map state that it can be used to instantaneously travel to certain fate spikes previously visited by the caster. That would be very useful indeed for someone with magical capabilities. Okay. Uh, the fate spikes are basically like these big obelisk things. And if you interact with them, you can teleport around. But be forewarned, when you interact with them, it respawns all the enemies in kind of like Dark Souls fashion. Uh, I'm gonna break some crates in here. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I gotta do it. Like, it's possible. Like, this is the only way that I've found to heal so far. And so I'm doing my best. The Ah, this is the old man right here. Okay. Well met, young one. Let us converse. Quietly. Okay, so what do you know about magic? It's a gift from the sisters to the people of Ort, and balance is the key. It drew on the very life energy of the caster, thus requiring rest and recuperation in between spells. It had some spectacular and even violent uses, but truth be told, it was mostly used for mundane things like agriculture. Balance can be discerned in the interaction between the three sisters. Their magic is stronger and weaker relative to each other. Okay. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means we're aligned to the sisters in one way or another. Hit a foe with the correct sister's power and your attack will be multiplied. Hit them with the wrong one and your damage is diminished. Remember the balance as you go. Using magic will hurt you, though it seems you can regain your strength much faster than a mere mortal by going up to a fate spike. Okay, so that's how I heal myself. Is that, like, all that he has to say? How can I improve my magic? Learning more spells would be useful, but I don't know how to do it. Maybe there are old records in Tarkumendo, a tower to the north. Okay. Theoretically, you could align your resonance with certain energy patterns, and that would increase your power as you gain more. Are you telling me that I have to do trigonometry in order to become a better wizard? It's kind of terrifying, dude. I don't know if I remember my trigonometry. Like, I took trigonometry, like, 1, 2 through, like, trigonometry 10. That's like Geology 101, is that you gotta be, like, the ultimate trigonometer. You know what I mean? But, like, I don't know if I remember it. Alright, let's get back to adventuring. They said to, they said to explore. They said explore, wander around, and the path will become clear. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. If we can explore without getting wounded so that I can heal a little bit, that would also be crazy awesome. There's a house over here. 
Ah, take that federal mail system. I disagree with you. I was just trying to contemplate what reason a guy would walk around destroying people's mailboxes. Like, we're playing mailbox baseball right now without people's consent, and so I assume that our character has some long-lasting vendetta towards the mail system, or at least written correspondence. Are you fleeing from Dormant Court? No, nah, not really. Uh, most people passing through here are. I think you should probably stay away from there. People say there's a sinkhole in the middle of the city. Monsters are welling out of it. Okay, what's in Dormant Court? It used to be the capital. I'm not sure what will become of it now. Everybody has fled. Well, those that survived, anyways. Hey, don't mind me. I'm just gonna bust up your house because I'm a terrible person. I just, I need some HPs and stuff. Alright. Alright, so having busted up this guy's house, what I want there to be is I want there to be an RPG where the storyline is heroes have gone off the plot and they are just running around destroying people's jars and stuff so it's impossible for anybody to like accumulate equity in their life and so you put together a team of anti-heroes and their only job is to stop the heroes from coming into town and breaking all the pottery that's pretty much it that's that's my idea for a video game right there okay well, oh look, another giant terrifying rift in the ground. Can I cross water? I cannot cross water. In classical RPG fashion, I have not been equipped with the power of the schwimmy schwimmy. Alright, let's go ahead and kick it on over here to the... Oh my god, that's a spoder. I'm gonna shadow bolt his ass. Got him. Boom! Get sha Oh, my shadow bolt is not as dope as I thought it might be. I mean, it softened him up pretty good, so I guess it probably wasn't that bad. But there's another couple kills right there. I do like the way that the XP travels from the mob and then goes to the meter. It's a really, really nice little detail that I always enjoy when it exists inside of games. The coins do the same thing, too. I, I always feel like that's a great presentational method. Mm, I don't know what's to the southwest. And, like, it seems like you can accidentally wander into kind of, like, the final conclusion of the game. Oh, there's dead people everywhere. Oh, and there's critters in here, too. Scary critters. Hadouken! Well, that worked pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and break this crate real fast. What did I just pick up? I got shadow coins. Sweet. Oh, what is that thing? Hold on. You, plick, you pick up a flawed talisman of Huwath. Equip it at a, fake, at a fate spike. Okay. I think I could probably do that. Do you guys wanna fight me? Oh, wow. That worked out great. Okay, I wasn't expecting that to be that efficient, but hey. Oh, you can also use the number keys to swap in between your stuff. Okay, cool. With these, like, shadow doggies over here? Oh, they aren't that tough. I thought that the shadow doggies were going to be something that I should be mildly terrified of. But it looks like they're not really that much of a threat. On the plus side, we got equipment, and I am interested in seeing how the... So, like, the last time I covered this game, I remember it took us almost, like, the full 30 minutes of the video, because that was back when I was still doing kind of, like, Let's Plays, and I was, like, in between impressions videos and Let's Plays back in those days, and I hadn't really decided what direction I was going to go into as a content creator. And so, anyways, we did, like, the first 30 minutes of the game, but that was mostly to... Oh, my God, he's got arrows. I do like how kind of the freezing system, though, like with time or whatever, does allow you to dodge things. We've got the honed Ocrat leather boots. Okay, now I definitely want to find a fate spike. I'm going to look around and see if I can find one. I want to equip some of this gear and see how it affects like our overall. Like We don't have a character sheet or anything here. And so like everything is sort of minimalist and hidden except for the letterboxing on the UI. <laughs> He can't help himself. He's just got to keep talking about the letterboxing on the UI. Are you going to shoot some spores? Spores. Spores. All right. Let's see if we can find, like, I had figured there would be a fate spike. Oh, there's another house over here. Hold on. Let's go see what they're. Hold on. I got ADD. I keep seeing things. And that's actually, like, a pretty good sign that this game keeps you exploring is because I keep being like, ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. There are, like, tactics inside the fighting. If you saw what I did right there, I was able to move in, hit him, and then run backwards and dodge his attack and finish him off without taking a hit. So, actually, I think that the partial the partial real-time thing that the game's got going on is actually fairly well-tuned and works all right. I wonder if the corruption is going to grow to, like, such a level. Who are you? 
The man stands gazing at the sky, his head craned as far as it can go. You look up as well, taking in the sight of Ort's many moons arranged in a familiar pattern. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the moons. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to wander on one of them? Like every footprint, the first ever. You stand in silence for a while, dreaming about what it would be like to wander on the moons, but then one of them erupts in a silent explosion of black and purple. The man gasps. The sky is streaked with bright balls of flame, long tails of thick smoke trailing behind them. One by one, they strike the ground all over Ort. You both duck for cover as the last one crashes nearby. Did you see that? Did you see where it landed? If you find it, bring it to me. I think I can probably do that, but first I'm going to loot your house. It is my right as an RPG protagonist. I'm allowed to go through all your stuff. All right, let's go ahead and break this over here. Break that right there. Oh, my man is kind of broke, dude. Now I feel guilty for breaking all of his storage mediums. He didn't even have anything good inside of him. Like, that was completely unnecessary. But then again, one could make the argument that, like, if he doesn't have anything, why does he have all these storage mediums? So maybe I just helped him with kind of, like, his spring tidying up. Like, maybe I did a good thing and helped him with his chores. I don't know, it's hard to say. More banditos up here by the Chronicler. Ow, he got me. Alright, I'll put him down. This guy has the arrows, right? Yep. Luckily, the archers seem to go down pretty quick. No loot off of them, though. I was hoping there might be looty boys. Alas, no looty boys, but I do see mailboxes that I can break. Northwest goes to Tarmacan. So we kind of want to go to Southwest so that we can rescue our sister and bring her back from the dead in the mausoleum. So that's probably what I'll do next. I do want to track down that meteorite, but I don't know how far or how close it landed. I'm not super sure on that front. Either way, let me break all your stuff real fast, bro. There we go. Give me all your goodies. Let me, let me have it all. Take from them everything and leave nothing behind. Strange man came through here recently asking if I'd seen a criminal accused of blowing stuff up. How would I know? I see loads of people all the time. Anyways, I wished him luck. He's going to need it and send him on his way. Last I saw, he went to the northwest. Okay. So, like, really, we've got, like, a number of quests. We can go find the meteor. We can save our sister. Uh, there was the blacksmithing thing for the broken prismatic ether coil. Like, there's a number of quests we can get after. That's actually partially why I'm checking all these houses. I don't know who might be a blacksmith and who might not. Oh, I don't want to hit him. Ever heard of the Hermit's Hut? Small house, quite a walk northwest of here. Went over there with some friends when I was just a kid and snuck up real close. Looked in through the window. House is tiny, but the inside's huge. Needless to say, we bolted. Okay, might be worth investigating. Maybe like a potential dungeon or something. How big is the world map? Oh my god. Okay, so the world map is actually pretty beefy right now. So I assume we're inside this right here. I actually kind of like this idea. What is that? Castle Mortifax? That's the Stargazer. Where's the mausoleum? We don't actually know where the mausoleum is. So the capital is where the corruption is spreading from. So that's where we're going to have to look around and take care of business. Let's head on out. It's said to the southwest is the mausoleum, so I'm going to head that way. Like, I've been wandering around killing mobs for long enough. It's time for us to actually, like, accomplish something. Mm, I think we found it. It was actually on this map. We didn't need a transition. Oh, boy. Place is being corrupted, so I'm sure this is not going to be an easy snatch. Oh, there's our sister right there. The man standing in front of you inspires a strong sense of nausea. His skin is untouched by the sun and has a purple tinge. You spot a couple of large bones protruding from the rucksack. Greetings, he says with an ingratiating smile. That's my sister. Oh, is it now? Terribly sorry you have to see her like this. Wait a couple weeks and she'll look a lot better. Stay away from her. See, this is why I prefer the company of bones. Don't touch my sister, bro. Oh. Apparently there was a secret passage inside the cracked sarcophagus, but I really like little details like that. Looks like I can break the bone pile. Hopefully it's not too dangerous down here. These guys look kind of scary. It may be kind of dangerous. I don't know. It's hard to say. 
Actually, they only take one shadow bolt to kill. I don't think I'm actually quite as scared of them as I was previously. Oh, they come back? Okay, so there's the catch. Do they ever die for, like, real? Ow. Damn, dude. I'm getting clubbed right now. Yeah, I think you just gotta kind of like move on and ignore him. Either that, or we have some kind of we we need some kind of special magic to put him down that we just don't have access to yet. I'm just gonna keep dodging him, and we'll try to grab what we can grab from around here. Our HP is not looking real great. Oh, maybe the necromancer is in control of him. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, go ahead and fire one of those over there. Oh, you get XP for every time you kill him, though, so that's pretty good. The man is on me. Do they stay down? I mean, AoE seem to work fine, so I'm just going to keep on trucking. Hopefully, I can ignore them. Uh, we'll grab... What is this right here? We need 50 purple coins. Oh, dude, I can't get in there. Oh, no, dude. Oh, and it comes out through the well over there. It's clever. I like that. Okay, well, there's not much we can do for our sister right now. Like, we do have... So saving Valka, I don't even know where to begin, but we have to find a way to bring her back to life. There are many ways to bring back the dead, but none of them are easy. Acquire a portal to the Howling Plains from the Chronoclary, and then access the dimension from the Temple of Fates. You will need a guide, like a spirit or a magical eye. Alternatively, the Bone King and the Under... Wow, they actually like tell you how to do the quest if you hit the hint. Now I feel bad for looking at it. I feel like I just spoilered for myself, and also via proxy spoilered for you. I thought the I thought the hint was gonna be like, look southwest of this town. You know what I mean? No, they give you like a step by step guide on how to bring back your sister. Good for accessibility, not so great for the fact that I just exposed it live on the internet, so now everybody knows. Weak. Sorry, everybody. Didn't mean to do that. I thought it would be a hint, not like a here's how you do it. <laughs> Oh, I found the meteor. I was wandering around, and it's down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. Nice, so we can take that back to the Stargazer guy. Oh, I leveled up. Sweet. I don't know if I get my HP back from leveling up. Wish that I did. Uh, what do we have going on over here? So what is this? Soul Curse. It's a blast of magic which gripped the spirit. Asialuma grows hot, scalding the target with a magical burn. Miracuri injects with a terror that caused them to flee in fear. Shal Moloch binds them in eternal bonds, causing them to rise as skeletons once defeated. Okay. Shal Moloch is the goddess that I chose to be the patron of my run, so it looks like depending on what goddess you go with, this spell becomes different and has different effects. Let's see what the other spells are. So this one over here. Conjured delusions infect the mind itself. Our goddess, Shal Moloch drips poison, making the target spread a contrived plague. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. I probably should have looked at the last one. I'll be honest with you, I clicked the wrong uh, dialogue response right there and feel kind of guilty about it. Ooh, treasure chest, hold on. I can afford this one too. So we've got a basic charm of the unspoken. We need to go to a fate spike. That's kind of where we're at now. Like, I kind of really need to go to a fate spike. Can I break this? Oh, I can. Nice. Okay, I'll take that. I think we have enough coins to get into the shadow chest now, too. Gah, the elderly man says. What makes you think you can just barge in like this? Don't touch it. Too late, brother. Too late. I'm sorry. I'm running. He might be an old man with a fast land speed that's capable of wounding me. Oh. Apparently some of the zone transitions right here are a little bit, little bit touchy. I prefer it that you actually have to, like, click on the building, because right now I'm just clicking and holding Diablo style to move around. I prefer it that you actually have to click on the building itself for you to go in. The moon fragment. Let's take this back to that other guy and see what he gives us. Alright, so here's our boy. Have you found the fragments? If you do, bring them to me. I have the moon fragment. He accepts the fragment reverently. It's still hot. Here, take this. Bring me more if you find them. Oh, sweet. So he just got, like, 20 XP and 12 coins? Okay. I don't know what I was expecting. Like, 
that, that's fine. Like, it's the first one that we've brought back, and it seems like it's going to be sort of a, a game-wide collection quest, I guess. It says that there's a spike this way, so I'm going to go, I think, to the northeast so that I can restore my HP, and also so that we can slap some equipment on our character, I think. There's a fate spike. Okay, so there's our HP back. We can access our inventory from here. So we have a basic charm of the uns unspoken. Corpses have a 10% chance to explode. Shockwave when you take damage at low health. I'll throw that on. Monster vision increased by 8%, but you have a chance to evade getting hit. Familiar spell cost reduced by 11%. That sounds pretty good. All right, well, there you go. Now you've seen the equipment system. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. This is Fates of Ort. It is a open-world, free-roaming, old-school RPG that I haven't checked in on in years. But honestly, I'm glad that I did because I really enjoyed this. You know, when it comes to my video game player type, I am very much kind of in the exploration Skinner box. Like, I find it satisfying to find things that other players missed. Or, I, you know, I'm the kind of person that combs through every single corner of every single map to find every little thing. And this seems to be a game that's very much targeting players like me. While I'm not a huge fan of the UI, I do very much like the pixel art. It's very simplistic, but it's very old school. It takes me back to like the early days of RPGs that you would play on like a Pentium 1 or whatever. And so it has been a bit of a nostalgia trip. And it seems like every single map on here, like each one of these is a big map to explore. And so it seems like there's a lot of content here. Like, on this map alone, there was, like, three or four quests, you know, that sent us to, like, other areas. And so if every single map is populated like this one is right here, that's going to be kind of wild. And actually, I'm sort of looking forward to exploring the game a little bit more. Uh, you can check the game out down below, but my experience with it thus far is pretty positive. I don't see a whole lot of things to complain about outside of, like, the letterboxing UI. Uh, if the developer could find a way to actually condense this and have basically, like, a minimalist UI and then the standard UI with, like, a little toggle or something, that's, like, the main improvement that I would suggest. But I don't even know if that's really an improvement because this is an aesthetic display style that just, like, personally, subjectively to my taste is not to my liking. And so, anyways, everything else is rad, though. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and that's all I got for you today. Bye, everybody.